every spring we have tons and tons of rain. What this entitles is it muddies up our creeks, rivers, and if you're like me out here on Lake Murray, they killed all our grass 20 years ago. So about half the lake becomes muddy. And for the past 10 to 15 years, I can remember that in January and February, we would always go towards the clearer water because we were able to find schools of fish that we couldn't find in the muddy water. And I've never been able to exactly explain why. I mean, we just got side scan about six years ago, so that kind of made it more easy. But at the same time, you could never find schools of fish in the muddy water. And I could never figure it out until today. So that's what I'm going to teach in today's video. There's going to be a story time video where there's going to be a lesson in it. So please stick around to the end. I'm going to try to explain my day of fishing and what went through my head and what ultimately I figured out that was made me able to catch the gi these gigantic black crappy. So y'all stick around. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button for me. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. It helps push my videos out. And if y'all could share it on your platforms. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe. Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Steven Turner with Turner Fishing. So on today's episode, like I said in the intro, we're going to talk about a day of fishing with Steven. Now, my sole intent on going out yesterday was to live stream the whole day of fishing muddy water. I was catching a lot of big fish the week before uh, under the bridge, and I wanted to go out there and catch some big fish live on stream. I had it so you could see the live scope and me fishing everywhere. But my phone ended up just randomly dying at like 40% battery. So I had to sit it back on the charger. And lo and behold, I didn't catch any fish on the stream. And I started catching them after the stream. So I just kind of want to explain what I learned. And even if you're an experienced crappy fisherman or non-experienced crappy fisherman, I'm telling you guys, this is going to blow your mind. So we're going to start off, you know, we're at the bridge. My sole intentions of the day was to go to the bridge. We did not put gas in the boat. We didn't do none of that. I was going to put in right at the bridge, motor out to the bridge, and that's where I intended on fishing. There was no crappie under this bridge. There was some striper, which I caught two. I think the biggest was about 19 inches. Now, as y'all can see, this water is, you know, pretty muddy. About a one inch visibility here in the Little River. So, in the live stream, before it cut out, I was like, well, I'm going to go check this dock. So, we end up taking off towards this dock. My boat only goes six miles an hour, so it's going to take us a little while. Now, halfway to this dock in my live stream, like I said, my phone just completely dies at like 39, 37%. It just shuts off. So, I'm like, okay. So, I put it on the battery pack, letting it charge, and I go check this dock. You know, I don't have this on film because my GoPro is in the, the tackle box. We pull up to this dock. There's four fish on it. Every fish is a pound and a half or better. And I'm like, okay. So I catch two of them, two giants. I mean, just studs. And that, that that's all she wrote. That was all on that dock. So I went down this row of docks and I never found another fish. So I go check this flat. There's no, no fish there. There's five or six brush piles on this flat. There's not a single fish in any of these brush piles. So I'm like, where the heck are these fish at? So I rolled to the back of a creek. You know, even if I could find a, some small ones, that would kind of indicate, well, I need to go to a better creek or I need to, you know, go to the mouth of the creek where the females might be set up. There was nothing back there. It was dead. So I go to some really deep docks, like 30 feet deep docks. They ain't a single fish on these docks. You know, I scope around, you know, through them, and I'm I'm unable to locate them. So what I ended up doing is I went around the corner from the really deep docks, and there's this little little channel bend, and there's a couple docks on it. I'm like, well, you know, I've caught some on the pass there. I'm going to sit here and check them. You know, I didn't have nothing to do. I think it was like... 11 12 o'clock i've got two fish on the stringer so i stopped probably i don't know 50 feet away from this dock 
about probably 100 feet. Let's say 100 feet. I dropped the trolling motor and I dropped the scope in the water. As soon as I dropped the scope in the water, I see one about 40 feet out. That's probably a pound 30, a pound 40 clash fish. So I go over there, I drop the snipe beaver on him and I catch him. I'm like, okay, well, that was random. You know, I just dropped the trolling motor in 100 yards from this dock and there just happens to be a fish here. So this dock's got to be loaded. So I run over there, I scan the dock. There's maybe, you know, I think there was like two little largemouth bass all the way in the back of it and maybe one under this pontoon boat. The one under the pontoon boat, probably a pound 50, pound 60 class fish. So I go over there, I do the dirty, and I ran my pole up under this pontoon boat, and we ended up sticking him. Broke him off, but he still bit. And that is what keyed me to what's going on. The reason that I can't find a school of fish in this dirty water, because truth be told right now, I could run up to Mid Lake down toward the dam and I've got six areas that has probably 500 fish sitting up under it but they're all nine to ten eleven inch fish and I mean it's a fun day of fishing don't get me wrong but I like to catch really big ones so it kind of keyed me in on what these big females are doing and where, where the fish is at in general in this muddy water so hear me out guys you're going to think I'm absolutely crazy when I say this. Instead of relating to cover in the mud, they're using the mud as cover. I'll give you a couple seconds to let that process. Instead of relating to cover, the crappy are using the mud as cover. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, what do I mean by that is... Plain and simple, instead of hiding under a dock, hiding next to this brush pile, hiding next to this pole, hiding under this laydown, they're able to hide by moving very slowly out here in the open water, in the mud, because in the main river, there was no visibility. If you dropped your jig this far in the water, you couldn't see it. So they were able to slowly move around and be okay, especially for a big female. Like it's, it, it takes a hell of a fish to eat a, a 13 to 16 inch fish to begin with. But the, the cool thing about figuring this out was I was able to do what I call the live scope dance, which I want to make a video about, but I'm scared to post it because it's one of those things like Josh Jones makes two thousand dollars a day in teaching exactly what I could teach on that video and I don't necessarily want to do that because if I get a little bit more famous I may be able to charge a little bit more for my electronic trips so y'all better get them out of cheap anyway we've anyway what i figured out is these big females are slowly just going down this swing they're not related to nothing there's nothing out there there's no fish on anything so what i honestly believe is in the muddy water these crappy are just relating to the mud and i don't know how to explain that better than saying they're relating to the mud so i got a couple clips for you guys i mean i'm sure i've showed some fish catches in the in the background but y'all check out these freaking studs i'm gonna make a couple videos about the baits and stuff you know in the next couple days about what i was doing because that has a lot to do with it too it's not just about finding them but how to find them i would tell you is go to your areas where you've had success before and back out and see if they're there because that's what ended up happening on today's adventure was they were not related to any of the cover that i'm used to fishing but they were around the area they're using the mud as cover so quote me on that you know 
Crappy used muddy water as cover. As crazy as that sounds, I mean, without LifeScope, we wouldn't even know anything about it. So. Oh.